Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're all doing well. In today's video, I'm going to be covering something that's been pretty requested over the past few years, and that is how to print and cut your own printable sticker kits at home. Doesn't this look like something that I ordered online? I mean, I did order it online, but something that got shipped to me from a shop. It's on beautiful premium matte paper. I can put it in my planner. Something that maybe cost me $15 to $20. No, you guys, I printed this and I cut it at home and it cost me $2.40 to pay for this kit. I'm going to go ahead and show you how I purchase, download, and print and cut my printable stickers. Now, this video is actually kind of not in addition to, but it's complementary to a video that I put up about a year and a half ago, which was how to print and cut and foil your own stickers. Now in that video, I go through a lot of similar steps showing you how I design like sticker scripts and uh, little die cuts on the program that I use to make your own stickers at home. And the steps are essentially the same. So if you want to watch that video, I go a little bit more in depth and I can show you how to make like your own stickers from scratch and how to trace things out. I would recommend that. A lot of the information will be the same, but this is going to be specifically for the kits that I download off of Etsy primarily uh, to use um, in my planner. Now before I get started I will let you know I apologize if this video is a little bit long but I tend to I do my best to be thorough and sometimes that means I'm long-winded but if it helps answer questions it is worth it. I'll put some timestamps down below in the description so that if you want to skip to certain parts of this tutorial you can do so. So I really enjoy using printable stickers for lots of reasons. First of all they're usually quite affordable. I would say that no more than five dollars is what I've paid for most of my printable stickers, most of which are even less than that, like really like the range of two to four dollars. I have lots of different printable shops that I like to shop from, um, and some of them even do two dollar Tuesdays the way that other shops do two dollar Tuesdays, but instead of like one little sticker sheet, you're getting an entire printable kit for just two dollars, which is awesome. This is something that you save to your computer and you can use it over and over again. You can print out certain pages if you just want certain things, so it's definitely something that is good if you're on a budget. I also, obviously I enjoy them because they are very cost effective, but um, I also really enjoy them because sometimes an event comes up or a holiday comes up and I realize that I don't really like the kit that I have or I don't like the artwork or I just forgot to buy something for that event. So printable kits really solve that issue very quickly. This kit I'm actually using for Easter next week because I really loved this artwork when I saw it online and this is actually my favorite version of it. So it's not even because I want to save money. This is actually just one of my favorite versions of the artwork and I'm excited to have it in my plan. Now there are lots of different shops that make printable stickers and stickers including kits but also including other things like icons and scripts and stuff like that. I'm just going over kits right now but you can use the same process for any kinds of printable stickers. But like I was saying there are tons of different shops. There are definitely some that I tend to go to more often just because I genuinely like how the shop owner uses the art and puts things together and the format and the stickers that the kits come with. So I will list the ones that I've shopped with and the ones that I enjoy in the description. Uh, Paper Crown Planner makes this kit and she's one of my favorites for sure. So what else? So that's that. Another thing that I will cover is the supplies. I'll have all of the supplies that I use listed down below. Now this is something that might not cost you $2.40 right off the bat um, if you don't have the right supplies. I personally do have a good printer, I have to buy my paper, and I also have a cutting machine which is a silhouette. You can choose to kind of cut these out yourself. You could just print out the kit and use something like an X-Acto knife or a slice tool to cut through, but I do find that it's a little tricky, especially with things like icons that have shapes and stuff like that, or deco. So I find that it's worth it. It was worth it for me to invest in a cutting machine. So if you choose to buy those things up front, it will cost a little bit more to begin with, but in the long run, you will be saving money. So I don't know the exact cost accounting of how much I pay per sheet or how long everything lasts, because I do use my printer and my paper and my cutting machine for other projects as well. But I will say that everything does last me a pretty long time, and if you've got good supplies, you can make them last. 
Now, one last piece of information before we get into the actual steps, and I'll show you what I do on my computer. Um, sometimes certain shops will actually also sell kits that you can even foil at home, which is really awesome. You guys know I love my sticker kits that come with foil, and some shops actually offer kits with the foil overlays included digitally. So again, if you watch that first video that I will have linked, I go through very in-depth on how to foil a sticker, and it's essentially the exact same steps, but in short, you print out the color uh, portion on your color printer, and then you go ahead and run it through again and print out the overlay on your laser printer and then foil it. And again, please watch that other video if you're not sure what I'm talking about because it's literally the exact same steps. You're just changing exactly what you're printing for the kit. If you have any questions about anything that I talk about, if I'm not clear or anything that I can try to clarify for you, please go ahead and leave it down in the comment section and I will do my best to answer. But without further ado, I think that we can go ahead and get started with this tutorial. Okay, so I went ahead and transitioned over to my computer screen. The first thing that I want to share with you again is the supplies that I use. First, I want to share with you the paper that I use. I really enjoy the nice premium matte buttery beautiful sticker paper that shops use and I found that this is the same paper. This is from Amazon. It is called waterproof sticker paper and it's white matte and you can buy it in these quantities of 10, 25, or 100 sheets. This is actually also available from their actual website which is onlinelabels.com which I will show you right now. It's the same vendor. You can just choose to buy it on Amazon, on Prime, or from the actual website. You get the same amount, and honestly, the price tends to be about the same. Maybe you just calculate the shipping a little bit differently on their regular website. You can choose whatever quantity you want. I usually buy 100 at a time, and I just checked. I bought 100 for $65, which I understand is not a cheap amount, but I actually bought that all the way back last June, and we are are now in April and I'm just about finishing. So it's been about 10 months since the last time that I placed an order and I'm only just finishing up now. And keep in mind that I also use this paper for other projects, for things that my brother needs or for my planner, dashboards, things like that because I do really like the printing quality and you guys have seen me do that. So honestly, $65 once a year, it's not so bad I think. And also on online labels, they have other types of sticker paper, regular matte, glossy, which could be different prices and even more affordable for you. So next, of course, is the printer that we're going to use to print the stickers. Now, on the screen, I have my exact printer that I use from Amazon. It is the Canon PIXMA TS9120. However, as you can see, it's not really available right now. I have had this for nearly two years, maybe even more than that. So I don't think that it's the most up-to-date version, and it seems to be pretty high in price because it's probably not available. So what I'll do is I'll link this one, but I'll also do my best to find the newest model or the most up-to-date version of this and link it down for you as well but I would really say that I suggest anything in the Canon PIXMA range they are really great photo quality that's why they're called like PIXMA and I find that they print out stickers really beautifully as well as other color um, sorts of projects that you have to do the next and final tool that I'll be sharing with you is the Silhouette, which is the cutting machine that I use. There are also other cutting machines like the Cricut. Uh, that's the only one that comes to mind right now. But I use a Silhouette Portrait. Now, I've had my Silhouette Portrait version number one for a number of years now. I don't think that they really sell it anymore. It seems like they're just up to number two now. So I do have number two on the screen and also linked down below. Even though I don't have the second version, visually they seem really similar. And this is also an opportunity where you could maybe find a used one on eBay or something like that if you'd like to save some money because I do realize that $180 is quite expensive. And this is also something that you could choose to skip out should you want to cut by hand or use an X-Acto knife or something like that. This is something that you could choose to not do. Um, but I would really recommend it. And if anything, this is probably where I would start because it really, really does help and save time and just make like your hands feel a lot more healthy when you don't have to cut out all of these stickers. If anything, I would suggest starting with your cutting machine and then choosing less expensive paper or a lower quality printer or something like that, and then maybe buying things later on. 
you don't have to buy everything at once to be able to cut out these stickers so hopefully that just gives you a little bit of insight and some advice into how I would prioritize things so now that I've shown you all of the tools I'm going to go ahead and show you how I buy and actually create these stickers Alrighty, so now I have logged on to Etsy and I have pulled up the digital listing for the sticker kit that I am printing and cutting in this video. Again, the shop is called Paper Crown Planner and this is her Easter printable. I paid $2.40 because she's having a sale, which I'll say she does quite frequently, but her kits are usually more like $4. And now I'm just clicking through so that you can see all of the different sheets that are included with this printable. Each of these sheets is included. You get all the different skin tones, different Different kinds of headers, lots of half boxes, really really great stuff and obviously you can also choose to print things out more than once if you need more than one of a certain sheet. Again, this is not the only kind of printable sticker kit that you can find on Etsy. You can find monthly kits, scripts, icons, happy planner, hobonichi, different kinds of sizes and planners, usually all around the same price, which is awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and add this kit to my cart to pay for it. But really quickly, I wanted to show you another one of my favorite shops. I'd say that these are my top two. This is Planning Chago. She has a very similar format. It comes with all the same things that I like, lots of skin tones and deco it's really great but this kit right here what I wanted to show you is that it is foil ready so as you can see on this last page you get the foil overlays that you will print out on your laser printer over the color like I mentioned um, in the beginning and also what I shared in my first sticker video so again if you want to see how to print and foil stickers and still have the color behind um, I would suggest watching those videos um, I also wanted to share that these kits come with multiple formats so you get regular JPEGs and PDFs if you want to cut them out by hand but you also get the silhouette files which have the cut lines and the bleed lines that way you just open up the file on silhouette on your computer and everything is loaded on there for you so now that i've gone ahead and purchased this kit i'm going to go and show you exactly how it opens up on silhouette and the steps that i take so once you pay you are taken to this page that says thank you for your order and you click this link that says view your digital files now usually all of the documents are listed right there but this time around because there are so many stickers and the files are so big this shop owner actually gave me a link to a Google document that had all of the items downloadable from Google Drive so I was just able to download it from there but it's really the same process you just download it to your computer so now here we are, I went ahead and downloaded the printable to my files and here you see that we have the different file formats, JPEG, PDF, I am using the silhouette files of course because I do have a silhouette and that's the easiest for me, but you can see that we have different versions of page 1, page 2, page 3, page 4, and page 5. I do use page 1 version with the brunette because I wanted the brunette girl since I'm a brunette, but you can choose whatever skin and hair color you would like. And then the different versions of page two are for either the glitter headers or the regular text headers. So now I'm going to open everything in silhouette and show you how the sheets look. Okay, so I've gone ahead and opened up Silhouette and I'm really quickly just showing you all of the pages that I'm going to be working with and the ones that I chose. Again, I chose the brunette version of page one and the glitter header version of page two because I prefer glitter over the other um, text headers. But now I want you to focus on this menu on the right that says page setup. This is really important to have accurate for the machine that you're using. That way everything just works out well. So I'm just making sure that everything is set for the portrait, which again is the machine that I have. And even though I'm not using a cutting mat, which is something that I will talk about later, again, I want to make sure that that is set to portrait and that my sheet is 8.5 by 11, which is of course a standard size sheet of paper. But more important than that, and something that I've noticed that has kind of messed me up in the past are the registration marks. So I'm going over to the third little square, the one that looks like it's filled in. Registration marks are these marks on your sheet. The two lines and the square on the top and bottom of the sheet and basically what those do is that they'll print out and tell your machine what to cut. It's like the instruction guide letting the machine know what to cut which is very important. You don't want to get that wrong. However, what I've noticed is that sometimes printables have registration marks that are like custom and for some reason and again silhouettes are just very finicky. They are 
animals with like their own mind. They just do whatever they want to do. My machines sometimes don't work with those registration marks. So what I usually have to do is restore the registration marks to default. And what you'll see is that they get thicker and bigger and they kind of take up less space or you're allowed less space on the page. Basically, you want everything that you're going to cut to be inside of these registration marks. If it goes outside of those lines, it will print, but it will not cut. Like the little blade will just not go out there. It does not work. So I want to make sure that I restore my registration marks to default, but I also want to make sure that what I'm printing and cutting will actually fit within that space. So usually what I will do is that I will select the entire page and just use my arrow keys to kind of move it over a pinch to make sure that it all fits inside and nothing is getting cut off. If you can tell the top part that says paper crown planner in the blue, that might be sticking out a little bit, but that's okay with me because I'm not going to use that part as a sticker. It's mainly the parts that I actually want to cut and print as a sticker that are most important to me. So you can see again, I just undid it and I'm doing it again. That way you can see that everything is in the registration marks and I will go through and do this for all of the pages before I even forget. That way everything has the right registration marks. So I'm going to do that super quickly. Now that the registration marks are all set, the next step is really easy. We're just going to go ahead and print out the pages. It's important that you print them out from Silhouette though, because you need to be able to print those registration marks. So if you just print out the PDFs or the JPEGs, they will not work in your Silhouette because they do not have those, again, little instructions, the registration marks that tell your machine what to cut. This is a look at what my printer settings look. Again, you see my Canon TS9100 series. I go ahead and choose the media and quality, and I make sure to put my quality at the best to have the best color payoff and the crispest lines. So I'm just going to send that, and I'll do that for each of my pages and show you what it looks like. Again, I apologize if I don't know what your printer needs because I just have a MacBook, and um, I also have the certain printer that I'm using. So. I will do my best to answer any questions, but this is where it gets like a little bit particular. Okay, so here we are. I just went ahead and grabbed my sheets from the printer. As you can tell, we've got the registration marks in the corners. And again, those pretty much tell the machine what to cut. I will say that mine kind of looks a little bit more cool toned, like the mints look more like a light blue. Um, I think that might have just been my printer. I could definitely be running out of ink and not know it. But I've got all of them here and now all that we've got left to do is cut. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out my silhouette and show you how I load the pages into the cutting machine and then I'll show you what I do on the computer to make sure that everything gets cut correctly. So here is my silhouette machine. Please forgive me if it's super dusty. These things just get super dusty. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my machine on and it does all of that. So I went through this again in my last how to print and cut your own stickers um, video, but this is the blade. I keep mine at about a one right there, if you can tell, that just works out for me. But again, it is trial and error. And I'm just gonna load in my sheets. So what most people do is that they actually use a mat, which is like a big piece of plastic that's sticky, and then you put your page on that mat and it just holds it in place as it goes through the cutting machine. That's definitely really important if you're cutting things out entirely, like a cardstock dashboard or some die cuts or something like that. But what I found is when I'm just cutting stickers, and that's mainly what I do, I don't need to use one of those mats. So if you can see here, we've got a few lines. I'm gonna go ahead and line my piece of paper up with this second line here. And then I'm going to press this second button on the machine. This first one has sort of like a grid pattern. That's if you're using the cutting mat. This one is if you're not using it. So I'm gonna go ahead and press this button and it kind of just loads it into place. And again, because it's cutting stickers, it's not cutting all the way through the sheet. I don't really need that cutting mat. This is still gonna stay in place and all the stickers will stay on the paper as you will see. So now I'm gonna go ahead again, like I said, show you what I have on my Silhouette program to be able to cut. And I'm going to send this through and show you how it turns out. 
Okay, so now we're back in Silhouette and I've got the sheet that I want to cut up on the screen. I'm going to click on the top right where you see a little machine that says send and that means this is where we're going to give the machine instructions on how to cut these stickers. So I go to the second menu item that says line and I often go for this one because what you see are all of the different line colors on your document and how they show up. So basically, again, I didn't create these, the sticker shop owner made them, and this is going slower because it's slowed down to be able to talk over it. Um, we have the different color lines, and as you can see, she uses red to outline the actual sticker, and then green to outline the sticker paper. Now you can choose to cut out the green ones, I don't because I prefer to cut them by hand. So I uncheck the green, that way we only focus on the red, which is the sticker paper and the actual stickers that I want to cut out. Now here you can choose this drop down menu and you'll see that there are lots of other different kinds of like media that you can cut like clear stickers or cloth, all these different things that apparently these machines can do like cardstock and chipboard. But I personally find that the settings for white sticker paper always work for me um, once I have my blade at that one setting. Now I go a little bit more in depth about this in my other sticker making videos. So again, last time, I'm gonna, probably not the last time, I'm going to, to suggest that you watch that. At the bottom, you can see that there are little things called force and speed. Force means how deep it's going to cut down, and speed, of course, means how quickly the blade is going to move. So these are just the defaults for sticker paper, but this is how you can kind of troubleshoot and trial and error to see what works best for your machine. You might need to move down the speed or move up the force or change your cutting blade, but I find, again, that the regular sticker paper with my blade somewhere between a one and a two, and I might have to adjust it as it gets like a little bit more dull, works really well for me. So lastly, all that I have to do is click send and then it will send these instructions to my cutting machine and I'll show you what it looks like while it cuts. Okay, so my sticker is just finished cutting. I'm gonna go ahead and press the bottom little piece of paper pointing down sticker and they are cut beautifully. I'm very, very happy with them. So now I'm going to go ahead and send all of the other pieces of paper to get cut and then we can finish this out. Okay, so all of my sheets have been cut and I did a pretty good job, I must say so myself, even though this was all the machine. <laughs> um, one thing that I did want to mention again for anybody that is interested in foiling their own stickers or if you buy a printable that comes with foiled overlays, you will want to print out the color first on a color printer and then stick the same piece of paper inside and then just print the foil overlay part using your laser printer and then you can foil at any point. It can be after you cut out your stickers or before. That is just up to personal preference. But then you will send it through your foil machine, whether it be a laminator or a mink machine or something like that, with the foil, peel it off, and you are all ready to go. Again, I do have a more in-depth version in my how to make stickers, make your own and foil your own stickers video. Even though I'm not showing you a printable kit, it's pretty much the exact same setup. <laughs> so I am going to now go ahead. You can definitely choose to keep these pieces of paper in their sort of large format should you want to, but I find it easier to cut them down. So what I have here is my Fiskars paper trimmer. I had a really cute one from Martha Stewart, but it did not work for me. So sometimes you just gotta go for the kind of uglier thing and it's just gonna work a lot better. So you don't have to be perfect, but I just try to kind of follow the lines of, especially like these headers up here as much as possible. And then you just cut. Okay, and here is the final presentation of the kit. It looks really good. Um, obviously, I did cut off a little bit of the top there, again, because of how I moved the images over to make sure that everything fit well inside those lines. But 
this is like pretty legit you guys and again you saw that I only paid like less than three dollars for this kit and I didn't even print out everything that it came with there were more fashion girls more um, headers like lots of stuff that I didn't do but I have so many stickers here for just less than three dollars Again, I think that this is a really great option if you are on a budget or you want a bit more variety in your collection, especially if you want something quickly that you can do at home. This is a great option, and I really enjoy printable kits. You guys see me use them ever so often, so I definitely hope that this uh, tutorial was helpful to you. If you have any questions that I can answer, please feel free to leave them in the comments down below, and I will do my best to answer them as efficiently as possible, but again, keep in mind certain things like about particular print or stuff like that I might not know because I'm limited to what I have used. So just leave any questions down below and I'll do my best. If you haven't yet, please consider subscribing or leaving me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. Until the next one, I hope that you take care, that you enjoyed, and we will chat soon. Bye everyone!